Hi again. Um, first of all, I want to apologise in case I've misread the situation. Uh, I thought we would spend our last episode down at the beach. Um, and it's been quite windy, so I really hope that you can hear uh, this recording. Now, I can't believe that it's been more than a year since the very first episode of CI20 went up on YouTube. Um, the response has been absolutely amazing and uh, it's been over a year. I originally promised that all these clips would take place within a year, so trust me not to meet my own deadlines. Kind of ironic really. Um, when I started this series there wasn't really a plan and what seems to have happened is that the more people that found out about this series the more people wanted to use this as a platform to share a story. After all, if any of these clips have influenced anybody in any way whatsoever, however small, then I think it's been a very worthy project. Um, one thing that I have noticed about some of the people that have been part of this project is that they are, they've overcome huge difficulties. And it reminded me of a quote that I read recently. Adversity is not destiny. I admire each and every person who's taken the brave decision to go ahead and have their cochlear implant because I know that the vast majority of them have gone on to live uh, very fulfilling lives. Um, but before we finish um, this series, I want to make an observation. From the many years of working with people with hearing loss, one thing that I've discovered for myself, and which I think is very relevant for a lot of people with hearing loss, is something called minority stress. Google it, it's a fascinating topic. I only came across the uh, term or the concept or a way of being uh, towards the end of my own personal therapy. Um, what had happened was in my mid thirties, I'd hit rock bottom and nobody really noticed apart from a few close friends. Now, thanks to the support of those very close friends, I am now in a much better place. But it hasn't been easy. The truth of the matter is, hearing people do think they're better than us. But they don't do it on purpose, it's all unconscious. It's the same thing for being gay. Straight people think they're better than us, but they don't do it consciously. It's, um, it's really difficult to understand um, or to explain, but the world is designed for normal people. The world is designed and built on the basis that people will go on and to have families, and that's fine. But I just needed to go into therapy to understand that the way I was feeling was not my invention. It was the way the world is built up around us. You could say that it's a, an unconscious projection or a form of superiority, but I do acknowledge that it's mostly unintentional. Now, I do know what I'm talking about. I've lived this way for 40 years. I experience it every day. As a member of two minorities, therefore, um, I've had to sit and endure this tedious favouritism over and over again. Um, and despite being single, despite being gay, despite being deaf, despite being bullied, despite being discriminated against, I am one of the most happiest people I know. Uh, so how is this? How, how can this be? Um, and I guess it just is. It's just because the thing is, I don't want to be normal. I don't, I want to be special. I want to stand out. I don't want to conform. I don't want to comply. I want to be different. I want to be influential and I want to be inspirational. And I want to continue to support people like you out there in the audience. Shortly after my own personal therapy ended, I decided to become a therapist myself. 
I spent four years studying and I'm now recognized by the BACP, which is the British Association of Counselors and Psychotherapists. I am a psychotherapist and I'm very proud to continue to do this kind of work. Now, the reason why I'm mentioning this today is because I think the training that I've had really complements the work that I do. All my life, I've tried to turn negativity into positivity, and I have my mum to thank very much for that kind of um, attitude. So I would like to take this opportunity, I'm really excited about this, I would like to take this opportunity to announce that I am now a hearing coach, okay? So please visit my website, go to hearingcoach.org to find out more. I want to continue to do this kind of work. In the UK, the National Health Service is under immense pressure, and I've heard stories of people waiting months and years for th this basic kind of support. Now, I don't feel like I need to convince you, but I have a lifetime of experience with hearing loss. I have worn hearing aids. I've suffered for many, many years with tinnitus. Um, I have cochlear implants. I'm an accredited coach and I'm also a qualified therapist and I want to continue to help people out there who need this kind of support now. Not in the months to come and definitely not in the years to come but now. Today is International Cochlear Implant Day and I want to end this series by saying how proud I am to be a cochlear implant, how thankful I am to be a cochlear implant but also to salute all the people out there that made the brave, bold decision to go and get a cochlear implant for themselves. Um, I also want to thank everybody who's been part of this series. It's not just about the people that have been willing to put their face on the videos and be part of the conversation, but also the people that have advised me on how to do things better and how to make this kind of like a box set. It's a new box set about life with healing uh, loss and cochlear implants. And it's on YouTube for whomever wants to access it at any time. Uh, remember to check out the website, hearingcoach.org. And I wish you all good hearing health. Remember, this is not the end. It's a new beginning. Signing off.